And we finished up 11 turns in Nyborg. This is going into the last turn. Um, largely, again, this was a turn about reforming the forces, and they don't have a lot of time to actually fight. Stuff to flip everybody over. But we had some firing going on in here. Um, looks like the, I don't know, the forces are getting much, much smaller. Uh, the one strength point left holding the line. Swedes are down to one. Uh, it's <laughs> just making an attack seems almost silly uh, at, 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 at that juncture. Um, and the only other interesting part was uh, Boddicker's forces. One, they took out the cannon. Um, that's kind of cool. I don't know if they had done that before. And now nah, they did that this turn. Uh, but also, their light infantry moved up and got itself into some trouble with the heavy. It, they were under charge orders. They had to move. They couldn't get out of them. They had to move next to the heavy infantry. It wasn't a front hack, so it wasn't the anti-suicide rule. But the heavy spun around, so now it's facing it, and then was able to shoot it on the way out. Uh, meanwhile, Eberstein is trying to rally his forces and get them together, but that's just not really happening. <laughs> um, all right, we'll go to the end, but it looks like it's a pretty serious Swedish victory with those piles. So here we are most of the way through uh, turn 12. Um, really not much happened back here. Uh, Badiker is trying to reform we haven't had uh, Eberstein's turn yet. He's got an even le lower precedence order. Uh, the Swedish center did not do anything yet. They're still holding. There's very little there, though. Um, uh, uh, Alfelt, uh tried to reposition and improve his, his situation. He got attacked by some cav, which he broke. Um, there was a big cav battle in here. Horn got not, uh, pursued a unit off the map. Um, <sighs> several units fell. I don't know if it's two or three, but basically Quast's command has been smacked aside at this point. It really doesn't look like there's anything big going to happen. That was about as big as could happen. Um, but there's no follow-up. It's almost it's almost nighttime, you know. I mean, it's almost three p.m. Uh, and uh, it's late in the year, and uh, I'll, I'll finish it up and come back with reports. So that was indeed essentially the end of the battle. Um, there were some rally actions. Uh, what's his name back here? Denbuck did not want to advance, so he just passed his, his action. He has nothing to rally, nothing to do. Uh, the Danes were unable to move any of their commands out of, into a more aggressive stance, and I'm not sure they really want to. I mean, to be honest, both armies are exhausted at this point, um, and really heavily worn out, and the Danes more than the Swedes. They want to get out of this. I think we know they lost, but I'll come back with numbers for you. So, I tallied up the points. Now, obviously, uh, I made a lot of mistakes with the Danes. Um, I'm not even sure what they are. Uh, I felt like I was under pressure to win the battle more quickly than perhaps I should have been. I think that's probably the biggest thing, so that instead of moving forward slowly and reforming as I hit these hedge lines as much as I could, which is to say uh, Eberstein has to make an initial attack, but beyond that, try to build something up that could actually uh, force the line all at once, because there were points where it looked like the battle could have gone in the Danes' direction, even though I think they would have lost already just due to the casualties they took early. 
Speaking of those casualties, here's what we got. There's what the Swedes uh, units lost. There's the Danish units lost. These are their cav lost. That's a killer. Uh, Point-wise, it worked out. Swedes lost 90 points. Danes lost 191. Now, their historical breakdown is for the Swedes uh, to have lost about 100, which is about where I got them but for the Danes to have only lost about 50. So obviously I completely misused um, my Danes. And hopefully I'll get another chance to play this at some point and uh, maybe redeem myself a little bit. All right, on to uh, the next one, which is Farabella, uh against... Uh, the Prussians. I may take a brief break and play something short. I don't know yet. I've got a couple of things that are kind of stewing and saying, hey, play me, play me. Alright. Uh, let me load this one up. I know it's tiny, but that's all I got to say. Good game so far. Uh, this looks like a, an interesting scenario out of them, actually. Uh, from the feedback I've gotten from other people, it sounds like yeah, I'm screwing up Riley. <laughs> and this really isn't, uh, you know, some kind of reverse balance situation. It, the Danes should be able to handle... I mean, they have humongous odds, there's no question. I just attacked so raggedly. But attacking's always harder, especially for me. And... I was getting used to the system again and not really, you know, oh, I'll go do this. Oops. <laughs> not a good way uh, to be if you expect the attacker to be able to do well. 